It's a baby salamander. I mean, it looks big to you and me as compared to salamanders, but this is tiny when we're talking Japanese giant salamander. Fire! What's going on, Coyote Pack, and welcome to Base Camp, a special Japanese giant salamander edition. That's right. Hopefully this week you've seen some of our segments that we released on the Japanese giant salamander. And today we're going to discuss a little bit of the behind the scenes aspects of filming in Japan. This was one of the most difficult episodes. Well, yeah, I guess difficult is the right way to put it because it took so long to produce right. this trip. Getting to Japan is one of the most grand adventures we've ever been on. It was a challenge. First of all, we don't speak the language, right? No, it's so, tough. Yeah, so we had to have an excellent guide with us, Richard, and uh, he helped us navigate through the country. Right, absolutely. Yep. I know a lot of you wanted to see me stung by the Japanese giant hornet, which we managed to get that episode, but the real reason we went to Japan was for the giant salamanders. And it's all about seasonality, right? We had to be in country at exactly the right time when the salamanders are active if we hope to find them. Right, so we had to plan it based on when the animals are active and how we're not gonna interfere with their life histories like breeding and hatching and so on. And of course, we also picked the time when it was typhoon season. Yeah, a lot of, lot of rain, but that also <laughs> meant higher water levels, so the salamanders were right. more active at that point. Now, we got to work with Okada Sensei, who was amazing. And I know upon first meeting him, it's like, he speaks a little bit of English, not a lot. He understands more than he can speak. Uh, but you have that language barrier when it comes down to, okay, this is what we would like to do in the field. And him trying to explain to us, all right, well, it might take this much time. It could be several days before we actually find a salamander. Right. And production for the episodes took us almost a week. Right. And, you know, back to Dr. Okada. I mean, he is the rock star of salamander biology and research. He has dedicated 20 years of his life studying the Japanese giant salamander. I mean, he is actually the reason why these animals still exist in Japan. So it was quite the honor to work with him. Well, yeah. a big threat that these salamanders face, you may be asking yourself, well, what sort of predators does a salamander like that have? And, and certainly there are smaller mammals that would feast on the, on the younger ones, the juvenile sub-adults, but it really is the encroachment of humans that right. is destroying the environment for these animals with the building of, of dams and barrier walls. Um, I know in the first episode, we, we really made that point at the end to say it's, it's the addition of concrete to the environment that is preventing the salamanders from traveling from breeding spot to breeding spot. Right, yeah. Habitat destruction, degradation, that is the biggest threat to these animals. They require healthy ecosystems. Their water needs to be clean. Essentially, these animals breathe through their skin. Right, right? so I have the little one here, which we gave away in the, uh, the Tokyo yeah. scavenger hunt, and this is what would be considered a sub-adult. And we did find some smaller ones like this in the field, we'll get into that in a second, but you, know, you can see, and we showed in the episode, these flaps of skin on the side of their bodies, just like hellbenders, they absorb a lot of their environment through their skin. As you right. guys know, most amphibians do, but salamanders specifically are great indicator species for how healthy an environment is. Exactly. Of course, it was probably unique for you guys to see an episode where I wasn't actually allowed to catch and handle the salamanders myself. But again, right. they're very strict, laws and regulations that only licensed researchers are allowed to make physical contact with the salamanders in the wild. Now, of course, the episode that came out about the Hanzaki Research Institute where the great Osanchiro yeah. lives, the <laughs> largest Japanese giant salamander on record in Japan, which I was able to get hands on with. Right. And what an incredible experience for all of us to just interact with that creature. I mean, it was massive. It weighed, what, 14 kilograms, which is roughly 30 pounds. Mm -hmm. That's like the size of a small dog, right? right? That's like <laughs> a lot of the snapping turtles I catch are like 30 pounds. Yeah, right? yeah, so it was, it was quite amazing to see such a large amphibian. Um, their structure is amazing, so well adapted to their mm -hmm. stream and water environment, mm -hmm. right? Well, it's that flat body structure, and you know, those little hands with those knuckle yeah. pads that can really just grip them in place, even with the strong flowing current. Uh, the family of salamanders, the genus that this group belongs to, thrives in cold water. And that's actually why they live so long. So everything is slow when you live in a cold environment. Your metabolism, how you move, you basically grab a prey item, that prey item will last you a long time as a meal. 
And as we know, the giant salamanders can live a long time, right? Mm -hmm. Well, the great Osantro is over 100 years of age, That's pretty which amazing. is crazy to think that a, a salamander of that size is over 100 years old dwarfs us when it comes yeah. to age and, and may outlive us. Nobody really knows. And, yeah. and it's, like I said, the largest one that is, is currently in captivity in Japan. Now, the smaller salamander, something that is mm -hmm. this size or smaller, is considered incredibly important to the science that Okada Sensei is doing. And Mario, why don't you explain why the juveniles are so important? Right, so juveniles in a population are really important because they're an indicator that, number one, the population is growing, right? They're reproducing, that's good. And especially for the salamanders, another reason why it's a good indicator is because they have these life stages or life cycles. They start off as eggs, then they turn into larvae, then they metamorphosize into sub-adults mm -hmm. and then into the adults themselves. So the larva stage is really sensitive mm -hmm. to the environment, right? The little larvae have actually gill slits and the water needs to be really clean and really healthy. So if you find these juveniles, it means that the larva have survived and that the ecosystem is probably healthy. Right, so when you have the bigger salamanders, the ones that are between 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 years of age, they've adapted. And while they are susceptible to pollution, they've at least allowed their bodies to become exactly. you know, in tune with the environment. So introduction of pollution, sometimes they can sustain a bit longer than the young ones. Like yes. I said, the young ones with the gill slits and breathing through their bodies become very much impacted by the addition of something like a pollutant. The small one that you found, which yeah. was, I mean, it was, it was tiny. It was the smallest salamander we found on the trip. Yeah, so I think the highlight of my Japan trip was the fact that we found during actually one of our b-roll days right mm -hmm. so we often go out into the environment and gather b-roll and uh, we're out during the day and it's not likely to find them during the day because they're primarily nocturnal but underneath a rock dr okada found a little salamander little giant salamander teeny tiny giant pretty much right and uh so we had to gather biometrics and i was helping them do that while you guys were getting b-roll and we determined that it was roughly around five years old and it was not a marked individual. So it was new to his study. So after biometrics, we actually put a pit tag in it, mm -hmm. kind of like what we do with the crocodiles, right? Mm -hmm. So it's got an identification number. And in his notes, he actually named it Mario after me. So essentially, I have a salamander right now in Japan that's swimming around, doing its thing, and hopefully, it might actually outlive me. It could live up to 100 years. If it's lucky, it will definitely outlive you. Yeah. Even though you will stay incredibly healthy, just like yes. hopefully the salamander <laughs> will, it's definitely going to live right. longer than you are. See you later, Mario. <laughs> you also had an experience like that as well, right? I did, yeah. Well, what's cool is that um, you know, after we filmed the main scene, and, and actually in total, we caught six salamanders on the entire trip. Yes. But you really only saw the one largest one we caught in the field. Once the cameras had wrapped and we were breaking everything down, I'm just looking around on the side of the river and I shine my flashlight right into the water and here's a salamander about this size just scurrying along the rocks. I call out to Okada Sensei, I'm like, Small salamander! I yeah. didn't want to say, because like, <laughs> if you say giant salamander, you just think big one, but yeah. it was a small giant salamander. You know, with the rules and regulations, I was not allowed to actually catch it myself. Right. So Akata Sensei comes running down, scoops it up with the net, and then we filmed an entire scene. It didn't make it into the actual episode, so if you guys want to see it, should we show a deleted scene? Absolutely, yeah. Okay, so if you guys are ready, let's roll the footage of us tagging and collecting the biometrics for a small giant salamander. I was able to just corral it gently till Dr. Okada got down there. So look at how small this one is. So this is incredibly important. Finding a salamander of this size means that reproduction is happening. And it's not likely that this one even has a tag in it yet. So we're gonna definitely need to collect its biometrics. We had just wrapped on the scene. I looked down off the side and it's a baby salamander. I mean, it looks big to you and me as compared to salamanders, but this is tiny when we're talking Japanese giant salamander. Now, it's actually more rare to find a salamander of this size than it is a large one. So this is really exciting. There's a good chance that this salamander does not have a tag in it yet. Look at that little junior. That's so cool. A little bit easier to handle a small one like this than it is a giant. Now, it's just like a big one, only junior size. Look at all that speckle patterning. Perfect camouflage for this river ecosystem. 
little bit of water in there. And the water actually helps to keep the salamander calm. See that? It's wanting to get out of the tube. And as soon as you get water in there, it just goes whoop and calms down. 32.5 centimeters is the total length. Here's the moment of truth. Does it have a tag in it? No tag. No tag. <laughs> oh, that's great. This is an yeah. undocumented yeah. animal. That's so cool. So this is really important for your research, right? Yes. All the time that Dr. Okada spends out here finding these salamanders, catching them year after year, finding out if they have tags or not, and this is a completely new animal, not yet recorded. You found it. Yeah, I spotted it. Does that mean you get to name it? Yeah, do I get to name it since I spotted it? Yeah. Oh, all right, yeah, coyote. That, yeah. Call it coyote? Coyote, the Japanese giant salamander? What's coyote in Japanese? Coyote. 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 This, this salamander is officially going to be named Coyote. All right, so you're gonna get a, a, a snout event. What was it? 3.8. Oh, 3.8. Okay. Head width? 4.3. 4.3. Oh, tiny as compared to oh. the adult that we caught. Look at the belly, much lighter in color. Much lighter. This, this is male. Oh, and it's a male. Yeah. How are you able to tell that? The same. Swollen uh, cloaca. Okay. A swollen cloaca. We've got ourselves a juvenile male here. Very young male. So how old do you, would you guess that this salamander is? Uh, 15. Okay. So what Dr. Okada said is that he's guessing this salamander is around 15 years of age. Really? It takes 15 years 15 to get that big? 15 years to get this big. That's pretty incredible. Hello. All right. So this is important. We're going to put a pit tag into this juvenile male. And like I said before, because it does not have a tag in it, it needs one, and this will allow Dr. Okada to continuously track this animal. And this is not a tracking chip, so we can't like come out with a you know little wand and detect where the animal is. It's an ID chip, so if it's caught again, he can scan it just like we did with the larger one, and that will allow us to see the health and the growth of this animal over time. We're gonna insert the tag here, and it's just like a little pin prick. Right there behind the arm, perfect. All right. Got it. There we go. Yep. All right, this baby giant is officially tagged. In 10 years. Junior? I'll yeah, I email you. Yeah. <laughs> With picture. That would be great. That would be great. So, you're going to get uh, some updates on Coyote yes. Junior if he's captured in the future. This is officially my son now. My son, the Japanese giant salamander. All right, so the last thing to do is to let Coyote back into the river where hopefully he will flourish and breed and there will be more salamanders here in Japan. Oh, that was awesome, Dr. Okada. Thank you so much. Wow, how cool is that, right guys? Awesome. All right, let's let him back into the river. How cool is that, right? Coyote Jr. Right. And what a special moment for both of us. And, and actually one thing that we, we got is this. See this little number <laughs> tag down here? You have one on the front of yours too. Yep. Okada Sensei gave this to us and he wrote in Japanese scripting there, be brave, stay wild from Okada Sensei to Coyote. You've got one too. Right. Um, and this little tag here is the official number of Coyote Jr. and Mario Jr. Right? Yeah, this is this is definitely a highlight and, and a treasure that I brought back from Japan. It shows the date that we captured mm -hmm. and tagged the animal. So, you know, this is very special to us because once again, these animals are gonna be out there. They're they're out there right now, thriving. Think mm -hmm. about that, right? That's pretty neat. Well, and like we said, there's a good chance that these salamanders, if they stay healthy and manage to avoid, you know, human encroachment, they will potentially outlive us. Wow. But what's so amazing <laughs> and, and certainly for Okada Sensei is that on that trip, when you think about the areas that he does research, he's been researching these areas for, for over 20 years. Mm -hmm. And on this trip, we magically find two new specimens that had never been tagged before, which was a, a pretty cool moment for us. Yeah, definitely special. I think Dr. Okada was very happy with us. 
Um, you know, when we come and work with these researchers or groups, sometimes they're nervous because they don't want a camera crew like messing up what they're doing and encroaching on the research. But we always come in in a very respectful manner mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, we help out with the research. A lot of times when you come in as a production company and you're like, hey, we want to film an episode on this, people might look at you and be like, uh, I don't know, cameras and lights and are you guys going to know what you're doing? Are you going to tell the story that we want to tell as an organization? Right. So I think we did a great job making sure to really stick to the storyline of, of not turning these things into monsters. Because nope. there is a lot of myth and lore for, throughout time that they were these river dragons but it's not something to be afraid of. They're the most sentient, docile creatures you'll ever encounter, and they rely on us as humans to protect their environments, and of course with what Okada Sensei is doing to promote that conservation so that they can continue to thrive. Right, and probably one of the coolest aspects of this is that the viewers can actually go out and do exactly what we did. Right. right, this is not exclusive to film teams or research teams. Now that does not mean you can go out and look for giant salamanders on your own, right. but the group that we worked with, if you search bushidojapan.com, you'll get connected with our amazing guide, Richard, right. who actually leads ecotourism into these environments with the Hanzaki Institute so that people can see these salamanders in the wild. So you can go out and watch Okada Sensei do his thing collecting data. Right, and you will contribute to the conservation because through ecotourism, the money that is made goes into funding Japanese salamander conservation. Which actually, I just had a crazy idea. I don't know if we'd be able to do this at some point, but you know how we did the Golden Adventure ticket for The Brave Adventures, the first book? Right. We should do something maybe where we take some members of the Coyote Pack back to Japan for some ecotourism. Oh, wow. Oh, it's got my epic. gears grinding. Okay, got a couple <laughs> ideas. We'll have to put a pause on that and see if it happens, but yeah. it would be pretty cool to take some of the audience members out there into Japan. It's, it's a unique environment. Yeah. It's not an easy environment to get through, but once you're there, just the history of that place is, oh, it's magical. That would be quite the adventure. It would be pretty cool. <laughs> All right, guys, well, make sure you go back and watch the two Japanese giant salamander episodes if you have not seen them at this point. Mm -hmm. Write in the comments section below and tell us what you love about the giant salamander and let us know. Would you like to go on an ecotourism trip with myself, Mark, and Mario to look for giant salamanders? Sounds pretty cool, right? Yeah, I think so. I'm Coyote Peterson. I'm Mario Decoa. Be brave. Stay wild. We'll see you on the next Base Camp Adventure. All right. All right. Conservation efforts for the giant salamander are imperative for its survival. And if you would like to help, make sure to visit BushidoJapan.com to ensure that there is a future for these majestic animals. If you missed our thrilling adventure into the mysterious world of giant salamanders, make sure to go back and watch as we got this slippery amphibian up close for the cameras. And don't forget, subscribe and click the notification bell so you can join me and the crew on our next wild adventure.